Breaking news, breaking news. My man Hank South over at Horns 24-7 breaking some news. Jonathan Brooks is turning pro. And what, what a rise for Jonathan Brooks. Starts the year, he's on the bench, coming off the bench. <laughs> RB2. RB2. For the Texas Longhorns behind freshman CJ Baxter. I didn't quite understand it. Yeah. Um, what was the worst move this year, Chip? Sark having Jonathan Brooks not start at the beginning of the season or having Keelan Robinson return kicks with a club hand? I don't know. I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out which was worse. I, I really don't know. What up, CB? Um, yeah. I mean, we're, it's tied 21 21, half time at the college. Football playoff semifinal. What adjustments are uh, is Steve Sarkeesian going to have for the Longhorns? I know. Let's put one-handed Keelan Robinson out there with a club on his left hand, and he'll oh my gosh. and he'll drop the first one. Let's. Oh, it's okay. Let's send him out there again. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Learning curve. Meanwhile. Jaden Blue returns the first kickoff out to the 35. Oh, Zay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you know. on that one. I don't, I don't know either. I don't know either. But continue, man. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but Jonathan Brooks, I mean. And here's the kicker. CJ got hurt in the first game. If he doesn't get hurt, do we – does Jonathan Brooks get the carries that he got in the Alabama in the fourth quarter against Alabama and against Wyoming when he had 20 plus carries for over 150 yards and he's breaking off runs of 60 yards. And I'll never forget Jonathan Brooks when he was asked for his best trait. He goes, I don't know. I'm not fast. And I'm like, what? You are fast. Like, you're fast enough. And now he's going to he's gonna go pro. It's going to be interesting. He's got a torn ACL. He's had the surgery. He's recovering. He's not going to be able to work out for teams. And they're going to have to take a chance. They're going to have to fall in love with his film, which there's a lot to fall in love with. But good for Jonathan Brooks. He knows the shelf life of a running back is not long. Um, he's, he is a tough, rugged, selfless. This guy's going to be a great locker room guy because all he does is produce. And why not get the clock started, get the career started, try to get to that second contract. Um, I love Jonathan Brooks. I think this kid is uh, uh, someone everyone should cheer for. He lost his father a, a year ago, his dad, um, who, you know, had liver, um, you know, he, he had dialysis. It, it was a tough journey for his dad. And his dad's the one who encouraged he and his, his brother, uh, Jordan, and the, you know, his mom, Jennifer, is a saint. She reminds me of my mom. Um, I'm just so happy for the Brooks family. I hope Jonathan absolutely kills it. And it's interesting because I wrote in the Insider today at Horns 24-7, um, we got to interview the assistant coaches at Media Day. And so I ran the dialogue that I had with Tashar Choice. And T. Choice said, Jonathan's going to ball. You know, if he decides to go, he's going to ball at the next level because he's got he can catch it. He can run it. He's got contact balance. He's hard to bring down and he's humble like NFL locker rooms are going to love this guy. He's he's going to be the first one to practice. He's going to be the guy willing to do everything. Special teams, you know, you picture Roshan Johnson, only not as vocal. Just does everything right. Yeah. Yeah. And 
he deserves to enter the draft at this point in the career. I mean, any other position that has an ACL tear, I would probably say, okay, be patient. You probably want to get back to 100%, you know, have another year in college and move on. But the NFL has shown us the value that the running back gets. And Jonathan Brook, he just can't take any chances, especially with the hype that he's getting, you know, with draft talks and mock drafts going on right now, even with the injury. And we've talked about it. And, you you know, previous weeks, Chip, there have been a lot of running backs that have torn their ACL and have gone off to have really good NFL careers. I mean, Frank Gore, he's the first one that comes to mind. I want to say he tore it twice while he was in South Florida playing for Miami, and then he's probably top five in Russian, I think, and he'll probably be on his way to uh, Canton, Ohio also. And then you got guys like, you know, um, Jamal Lewis, who tore his ACL and then had a bounce back year. And I want to say went over 2000 yards. Like he, he wants to say he tore his ACL in that season. They won the Super Bowl or the year after. And then he had those big, like 2000 yard seasons and the list goes on. Willis McGahee. So John Brooks, I'm not worried about him, you know, getting back to full health. Like he will be back to full health and he'll be an issue in the NFL. And yeah, kudos to just a guy that never hung his head low. Like he's probably thinking, Thinking, okay, B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson, they're gone to the NFL. It's my turn. And then here we bring along this five-star freshman out of Florida, and Sark gives him the spot, which, hey, I guess C.J. Baxter deserved it. I mean, you and I talk about it all the time. There's sometimes players in practice that don't show much, and then when the bright lights come on in the game, they're all world. You know what I'm well, saying? You don't, like, you don't hit. Player. You don't hit as much. You know, you hit on Tuesdays, and you hit – in camp, but you probably don't see that kind of contact balance in practice. You got to see it in a game and, and Jonathan Brooks kept showing it. I mean, it was every run he had yards after contact over half of his 1139 rushing yards were after contact. He had 64 force missed tackles. He was top five nationally at the time of his injury in forced missed tackles according to pro football focus and that's that's what the nfl loves they love that they need to see guys who step through arm tackles who who tacklers bounce off of Bijan robinson's got it um jonathan brooks doesn't have the wiggle of Bijan, but he's got the he's got the vision and he's got the contact balance and He's he can catch it. So I think and he's smart. You know, he can handle a complex pro offense where he's you know got all the motions. He knows where to where the blitz is. He he doesn't miss on blitz pickup. That was probably the biggest thing they missed about Jonathan Brooks, especially early on, was the blitz pickup. Quinn got sacked a couple times because <clears throat> CJ wasn't quite as adept, which is to be expected for a young running back. That's one of the hardest things for young running backs to, to pick up and to engage. Bijan was terrible at blitz pick up his first couple of years. Like he didn't go meet the contact like Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks was looking to administer some punishment. And, and that's what NFL teams love too. It's like, he's not just absorbing the blow and getting pushed back into the quarterback. He's, He's trying to take, you know, he's like a ram on the side of a mountain. He wants to take your head off. And that's that's another thing that NFL teams are going to see and, and say, okay, yeah, this guy's got it. And, and it's tough. It's a hard world out there, man. Think of all the running backs who've come out. Hell, even Bijan's been in and out of the, you know, game plan. I don't know what the hell Arthur, whatever – Johnson, Arthur Blank, Smith. all of them, all those Arthurs. Yeah, Arthur I Smith is messed up. Joke. I, I but still think of, you know, like Michael Carter, Javante Williams. I mean, there's a bunch of dudes who've come out and they've ended up splitting time. Obviously, DeAndre Swift bounced a little bit. He's looking good now. Um, Jameer Gibbs, my freaking Lions, passing on Jalen Carter. But um, hopefully, Jameer Gibbs is going to be. Um, lights out. And yeah, um, how about uh, 
Well, I was going to say, Emmanuel, that Deshard Choice's comp for Jaden Blue is Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs has that kind of speed. Uh, Jay Brooks has good speed. He's got football speed. He just seems to run away from people. But yeah, I, I would say Jonathan Brooks is more like a Dalvin Cook. I, I, I would say that bigger guy has a lot faster than you think. You know, bounces off guys like that. That's the cop for me. But hey, everybody has their own opinion. And yeah, I just, the Horns missed them, especially in the CFP semifinals. I mean, both running back CJ Baxter and Jaden Blue fumbled, and we were so confident, especially me. Like, I was so confident in the running game, which it was successful when they did it. You know, like they were moving the ball, just those fumbles, you know, playing from behind. You couldn't really do what you wanted to do. You couldn't be on schedule like as you would have liked. And you just would have think if Jonathan Brooks were there, would things have been different? You know, it's so easy to play the what if game. But, yeah, I – <laughs> the dude was so special this year, man. Like, it was very impressive. Like, the offense ran through him. Like, it was stop Jonathan Brooks first, even with the prolific passing game that we saw at times with Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Wordy, Jordan Winnington, and JT Sanders, and then, you know, see what happens after that. But, yeah, Jonathan Brooks, he proved to everybody on that staff, oh, this guy, he's the man. This guy, he's going to be a Doak Walker Award winner. And obviously the TCU game happened. But, yeah, that dude, he he had a hell of a season. And I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah. I mean, you, you go back and look at it. He had the 14 carries for 57 yards against Alabama. A lot of that in the fourth quarter. And then he gets the the – Bulk of the load against Wyoming, 21 carries, 164 yards, had a 61-yard run. Um, and then as the season went on, he added the receiving game. You know, five receptions against OU, eight receptions against Houston, um, you know, four receptions for 40 yards against BYU. And... The guy was big time. I mean, he had a he had a 73 yard reception against TCU. Crazy. So, yeah, there's a lot to like. He fumbled once um, against Kansas State. It was his only fumble of the year, um, and and it was it was costly, but they got the they got the strip sack from Ethan Burke at the five that Brooks took in for a touchdown on the next play kind of equaled out. But yeah, I just, I just love Jonathan Brooks because he's so humble, you know, my, and he just knows one way, like he's not going to get deer in the headlights in the NFL. He's going to just do what he does, do what he's always done. He was a workhorse production machine at Hallettsville. He'll be a workhorse production machine, whether it's special teams, but I, I get a feeling and, and we're getting questions. When will he, you know, hit the field? It's typically a year. Um, it's kind of like a nine month um, slow build. And then, you know, three months of intensive. So, yeah, we, we saw Brees Hall this year for the Jets. I thought he looked good coming into his second season. The Jets were the Jets, so you can't blame Brees Hall for any of the lack of production that he got. But you saw Brees Hall at times break out, and you're like, okay, that dude, he's getting back to normal. And then Brees Hall just said on social media, like, yo, next year, that's going to be my Pro Bowl season. And y'all are going to continue to see me have Pro Bowl seasons after that because he knows – like you said, Chip, it does take a year after the ACL tear happens to do rehab and to not only get physically prepared, but also mentally prepared and have everything in line. And, you know, you might be 
healthy enough to play, but to get back to your old form, that's still going to take a little bit. So yeah, just examples like that and modern medicine where it is right now, like tearing your ACL, it's not as traumatic as it once was. So yeah, that at Hallettsville, he was the man. I think he's like you said, Chip. He's so humble and just very confident within himself. You don't got to worry about all the demons that comes with being an NFL player because a lot comes with it. I mean, you play for those four months, that other eight months that you have time off, NFL coaches and GMs will tell you that's some of the scariest moments because you don't want to get that call. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? John and Brooks, he's not going to be one of those guys, like at all. You know, he's cut from the same cloth as Roshan Johnson and B. John Robinson when it comes to what he does off the field. And he's going to make Longhorn fans proud for the rest of his career. He's just built like that. And to go along with all the rest of the great running backs that have worn, uh, worn the burnt orange, he fits that mold too. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, all you could do is wish him the best. And with the running backs that you have coming in and that are going to stay, like C.J. Baxter and Jaden Blue, those guys are only going to get better. Jonathan Brooks, with the value that the running back is in the NFL, his time is now. This is a good move for him.